The debate around Britain's membership within the EU has taken centre stage here in Britain and it's not going away anytime soon. Now, the UK Independence Party, or UKIP as they're known, have long held the view that Britain would be better off out. And as for their leader, well, if you haven't heard of him yet, where have you been? He's the firebrand politician who once told the EU President Herman Van Rompuy that he had the charisma of a damp rag. His outspoken views often raise eyebrows, but he seems to deflect criticism with ease. He is, after all, the man who survived a plane crash. It's whatever you do, don't tell him where he can or can't smoke. We are, of course, talking about Nigel Farage. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's get straight to it. UKIP uh, is the anti-EU party, but we've seen David Cameron put the promise of an in-out referendum on the table. So that's your thunder stolen, isn't it? Well, I mean, he said if he wins the next general election, well, that looks pretty unlikely. Following a renegotiation, which, uh, given the temperature in Brussels, looks virtually impossible, um, in five years' time, he's going to give us a say on whether we should remain part of the European Union or not. Uh, there's one really big problem with that. He's done it all before. In 2007, he gave us a cast-iron guarantee that if he became Prime Minister, we'd have a say on the Lisbon Treaty, and he's let us down like a cheap pair of braces on that one, and frankly, I don't believe him, I don't trust him. And what people say to me is, we don't want to wait five years. Let's have a referendum before the next general election. If he said that, I'd cheer him to the rooftops. If we do get a referendum, though, where does that leave you, Kip? It doesn't matter. What matters is we get the independence, democracy and self-government of this country back. The reason we're in this mess is because 20 years ago, at the time of the Maastricht Treaty, Tory members of Parliament decided that the, that the well-being of their party's unity mattered more than the independence of our country. And I'm not going to make the same mistake with UKIP. What happens to UKIP doesn't matter. The reality, of course, is we're a party with a plan for what we should do once we leave the European Union. But that isn't the issue. The issue is, are my children going to grow up in a country that they can call their own? Do you think UKIP are winning the battle of proving to the British public that UKIP can be a serious, credible political party? Well, I think if you look at the opinion polls, if you look at our performance in recent by-elections, um, you know, people aren't voting for us just on the constitutional question of Europe. They're voting for us because of our stance on open-door immigration. They're voting for us uh, because of our stance on wind turbines. They're voting for us uh, because we're a party that believes um, that social division um, has become wider and wider with the abolition of the grammar schools. There are lots of actually very strong and positive reasons why people are voting UKIP. Well, let's talk about immigration. The coalition has said they're getting serious about it. Yes, you're absolutely right. David Cameron was in India. He said um, th 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 there will be no upper limit. I repeat, no upper limit on the number of Indian students that can come to Britain and then settle thereafter. Um, and, of course, he also um, not, not only endorses Romania and Bulgaria um, having full access to the UK labour market and social security system after 2014. Now, even that's not enough for David Cameron. David Cameron wants Turkey to join the European Union uh, with the free rights of access for another 80 million people. So, you know, that's where David Cameron is on immigration. He is encouraging open-door immigration, on, in, a, in fact, just in the same way that Tony Blair did. What would you say to the criticisms that your views on immigration are fueling prejudice? Well, that's, com that, I, you know, I mean, I just resent that and reject that. And, uh, and if people um, are deeply prejudicial um, against those from overseas, they can go and vote BMP. <laughs> Don't vote for us. Go and vote for the BNP if that's how you feel. If you're like UKIP um, and, you know, you wish people in Romania and Bulgaria well, uh, but you don't think that a total unlimited open door is a responsible thing to do at a time of 22% youth unemployment, uh, then come and vote for UKIP. What are your concerns regarding immigration when it comes to Romania and Bulgaria? Never in our history, until 2004, have we ever had a complete unlimited open door. You know, ever since 1945, we've had an immigration policy in Britain. Something like 30 to 50,000 people a year for that 50-year period came and settled in this country. Over the last seven years, it's now between five and 600,000 people a year. Nothing like this has ever happened in our history. And I think the great danger 
with Romania and Bulgaria is that we're dealing with countries that are several times poorer than Poland and Latvia and Lithuania and the ones that accessed uh, the UK back in 2004. And you know there is a risk uh, that over the course of the next few years very considerable numbers of people will come um, and frankly um, I don't think our labour market or our social security system can bear it. Do you think it was the right move to attach this issue of uh, Romania and Bulgarian immigration at the beginning of the next year so closely to your party? I honestly believe uh, th that even though I doubt the sincerity um, of Cameron's pledge on a referendum, that what he's done, he's let the genie out of the bottle. You know, we are going to have, over the course of the next few years, a very big, open, honest debate in this country about whether to remain part of the EU or not. And I predict that the key issue on which this will turn will be open border immigration. That is going to become the number one issue. And when it comes to a referendum, that above everything else is what people are going to vote on. So you say you're standing up for the British people? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, particularly, you know, unskilled labour, um, you know, they are having a very, very difficult time. Um, and, and, and equally, um, quite a lot of skilled labour um, is having a difficult time because of massive price undercutting. You know, I do understand that if you're a big employer, then open door immigration is a very good thing because you can get people to pick cauliflowers far more cheaply. Um, you can get people to work on building sites um, and save yourself some money. Um, and that does push down wage inflation in this country. I accept that. I understand that. But on the other hand, if that is directly putting people um, into a situation of unemployment, then it, whilst it may be good for the big employer, it certainly isn't good for the country. So you say you stand up for everyone, but what exactly do you mean by that? Well, I think there is a, a feeling, I share it, uh, that we now are run by a political class of people. Uh, they all go to the same schools, they all go to the same Oxford colleges, they all take the same degrees, they all marry each other's sisters, um, and they all finish up having go gone from research offices straight into Parliament. You can't put a cigarette paper between them in terms of policy. They have no hobbies or interests, or what Dennis Healy used to call hinterlands. I mean, they don't even collect stamps, these people. You know, they spend their weekends sitting around together talking about politics. They are utterly disconnected from the thoughts, hopes and aspirations of the ordinary working family in this country. And I think we, as a political party, are far more in tune. And I do, you're known for making comments like that. Um, you're a firebrand character. Do you think, though, you're a politician or polemic? Well, I, I hate to think of myself as a politician. Look, I was in business for 20 years. I only got into politics because I felt the entire political class were taking us down a road uh, towards uh, a united states of Europe uh, that would mean that not only our democracy, but actually our place in the world would be severely diminished. And so I got into this, um, and indeed, in this very town uh, that we're sitting in today of Eastleigh, um, I was UKIP's first ever candidate, and I stood in the by-election here nearly 20 years ago. Um, and I, 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 I believe even more strongly that if our politicians were out of touch 20 years ago when they took us into the exchange rate mechanism and signed the Maastricht Treaty, they're even further out of touch today. So we leave the EU, UKIP get what they've been fighting for. What happens to our trade with EU countries? I tell you what, I'm absolutely convinced that my favourite Rioja producer will want to go on selling many, many cases of Rioja a year to me. I'm absolutely certain that Mercedes will want to go on selling their cars from big showrooms in London. And remember that uh, the last year that we have trade figures for, we traded with the European Union at a deficit of £46 billion. Pounds. A cumulative trade deficit over the last five years alone of two hundred billion sterling. We are one of the EU's biggest export markets in the world. And we get this rubbish put out by Mandelson and Kinnock and Heseltine and all these ghastly people telling us that if we weren't part of the European Union, all economic activity between Britain and the EU would cease. It's absolute rubbish. Nowhere in the world do you need to be in political union to buy and sell widgets from each other. It, it, it is arrant nonsense. So you think that Britain should be building trade links with other countries, say China, for example? Uh, Dave Cameron was in India uh, with a great big travelling circus, supposedly the biggest ever trade mission uh, that a British Prime Minister has ever been on. Um, and whilst it's true that we can do trade with India, the one thing that Cameron could have put on the table to really secure vibrant 
exciting trade relationships with India he was incapable of doing. He wasn't able to go to India and say, right, let's have a tariff-free trade deal between our two countries, and we can't do that because we're trapped in this completely outdated concept of a European Union's customs union. We are banned, the world's sixth largest trading nation, and we're banned from making trade deals in any other part of the world. And it's really funny because, you know, we're told, oh, you must be part of a big block. Well, look at Switzerland. It's a tiddler of a country in terms of population, and yet the Swiss have more trade deals with the major non-EU economies around the world than we do. Independence is your party's tagline. What does independence mean to you? It means that you govern your own country. It means the British people at general elections put people into Westminster and it's those people and those people alone that decide what employment regulations are, that decide what our overseas trade policy is, that decide uh, what we should be doing about Britain's looming energy crisis. And that that Parliament is able to take those key decisions and at the end of a four or five year period, we the British people can assess them, we can boot them out and we can pick somebody else with a completely different manifesto. And one of the reasons why general election debates in Britain are now limited basically to schools and hospitals is because on virtually every other area, the legislation that is made at Brussels level cannot be changed by a British government or British parliament. It's narrowed in political debate in this country. So as a defender of independence, you back the Scottish independence referendum? Well, I can't understand anything Alex Salmond has said for 20 years. Because isn't he the, the Scottish Nigel Farage? No he's, a con, no, he's a con job, isn't he? Because he's been saying we can leave Westminster and be an independent state in the European Union. Well, hang on, I'm sorry. You, know, you cannot be an independent state and be part of the European Union. Um, and actually, Salmond's position has changed. I mean, now he wants to keep the pound. He wants to keep the Queen. Um, he seems to be quite pro-military cooperation as well. Um, and even his independence in Europe line has now been dealt a fatal blow by Mr. Barroso. I never thought I'd ever say anything nice about Mr. Barroso, but um, he has said that if Scotland leaves the UK, reapplies, it would have to reapply to join the European Union and sign a treaty that committed Scotland to joining the Euro. And the Scottish people have looked at that and said, no, thank you very much indeed. So I think the independence referendum in uh, 2014, uh, you know, I very much doubt uh, that more than 20, 25% of people will vote for independence. And we can then have a proper debate um, about the relationship between Scotland and Westminster. Personally, um, I'm, I'm pro more devolution. You know, I, I've got no difficulty uh, with the F word, the federal structure within the United Kingdom. Um, and I think the Scots should actually uh, be raising more of their own money and spending more of their own money. Do you see yourself as Prime Minister? Oh, it's pretty unlikely, isn't it? I mean, look, you know, here we are. We are third in the opinion polls. We're above the Lib Dems. We've made huge progress. Um, I, I very much believe that in the European elections of next year, uh, we've got a serious chance of winning those elections nationally. Um, I think it's unlikely that we're going to be the biggest party in Westminster in 2015. Um, but what we could well do is we could well catalyse some sort of realignment of British politics. Uh, whilst we draw our votes from across the spectrum, it is pretty clear to me that the Conservative Party is now going through, uh, I think, just, just about its deepest crisis in history. There are two distinct wings of the Conservative Party. They don't agree with each other on virtually anything. Um, and I think if UKIP gets much stronger than it is today, we could see something really new and, and really quite exciting in British politics. Okay, Nigel Farage, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.